Now for our faithful few who have remained with us all the way to the end, we are going to bring a great panel. It's our tradition to have Penelope Douglas, who's been on the board for uh, Mission Hub for quite a long time, to emcee this panel of folks to reflect on what we've heard here at SOCAP and to point us to the future. So Penelope and your team, come on out. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be welcomed by Jets, I believe. <clears throat> Passionate audience, I can tell. Um, and uh, we're passionate about you, so if you happen to want to move up to help us close this out, feel free. The, um, this, this closing session is oh, going Jeff's to be, of here. course, yeah. interesting uh, because of our extra sound effects. Should I move over? Yeah, I'll move over. Just but, <laughs> but what it Jeff's always gives us a chance to do is to sort of think about where we're going. And it, it's, a, it's a chance to be a little personal together and to be a little bit reflective. And I never quite know what I'm doing um, <laughs> in this particular session yes, until literally the morning of, never. Yeah. Of, of our session. <laughs> I, <laughs> including the fact that we were just joined by somebody on stage. Um, and I'll have to make sure that we all do good introductions. There may be others who join us. Who knows? You know? um, so, by way of letting our uh, panel introduce themselves to you as fellow human beings, I'm going to have them, you've met them all already, mm. so I'm going to have them introduce themselves in a slightly different way. Mm. Um, and so, starting with you, I think, Davida, yeah. um, if the audience wants to get to know you a little bit better, how would you tell them to get to know you by using a picture of you or a song? What would the song or picture look like? Okay. Well, for those who I've had the opportunity to meet um, at SOCAF over the last three days, and I just spoke on a panel this morning, it will come to no surprise to them that I've introduced myself as the daughter and granddaughter, great-granddaughter of deacons and preachers. preachers. So as a child, I was uh, born and raised and set at the pulpit, set at the foot in the pulpit of ministers. So if you were to take anything away and remember me, and what it would look like, it would probably look like in a song, if you can imagine being in a Baptist church mm. and the choir doing this grand entrance when the choir comes in to the church. And the song that would probably represent me in terms of my personal reflection and takeaway from SOCAP is this song called One Step. And as the choir marches in, they sing this song, it's called One Step. All I have to do is take one step, and he will do the rest. <laughs> it says, if I take just one step, he will do the rest. And that is a reflection of my experience here at SOCAP, because sometimes I feel in Detroit that I'm alone. And coming here to SOCAP around all these visionaries and around the people who share my same dream and the same mission, I feel like... God is putting people in my life that will allow me to propel and carry my mission forward. But all I have to do is take one step and heal the rest. Beautiful. Woo! Amen. <laughs> I knew Davida was going to set this, the bar fairly high for the rest of you. I had to be at this end. Who wants to volunteer to go next? Please. Sure. I, I don't mind being a, having a tough act to follow. <laughs> Um, the song that came clear to me being here, it's one of the times that I, I feel more like a uh, representative of New York than anywhere, like a fish out of water. <laughs> um, one of the things that I have here is that uh, when I've been coming to every SOCAP, I'm mostly uh, famous at SOCAP for just showing up at SOCAP. I've been giving awards <laughs> for just showing up at SOCAP. Um, so I, I used to call myself, a, I'm a SOCAP groupie, but 
possibly considered a, a, if Sokap has a Kardashian, that would be me. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just here. Um, but the one thing that I find is that in the West Coast vibe, like in the classic East Coast, West Coast culture, um, I'm constantly having people say, you are so New York, you are so New York. So if we had just, you know, I don't know, let's say uh, the Liza Minnelli version of New York, New York playing behind me at every moment as I walked around the room, I mean, I've got the face already, I've got the attitude, I've got the thing, but that would be my soundtrack that I would play here. Fabulous. <laughs> I hear it. I'm hearing it. <laughs> Who's next? I'll have to call on you. Esther. All right. <laughs> um, this is Esther Park. Hi. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think for me, the, the thing that comes to my mind is the Haystacks painting by Monet. And I think of that be for a couple of reasons. One is that, um, you know, this marks, a, it, it's, it's an Impressionist picture. Um, and Impressionism really broke the rules of its day when it came to art. Um, you know, everything used to be very real and hard lines, mm -hmm. but Impressionism really started to break the rules of, of what, what was beauty and, and, and how you captured the feeling of a picture. Um, and I feel like with the tool of finance, which often has the hard lines and rules and, and models around it, I like to think of myself as the impressionist financier, um, you know, to take a very different view of how we do finance, to blur the lines, um, to break the rules, and to create a new definition of beauty. Um, Beautiful. And so that's Beautiful. my picture. And when we, I ask you a few more questions, this, will, this picture will become more beautiful because of your work. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Kevin, I'm going to let you go last. Okay. That's good. So, so that, Ed, it's up to you. Up. Right. Okay. Um, I have to go back to, the, I mean, I was, grew up, I'm a Buddhist now, but I grew up in the Baptist church. Mm. And so those roots go very deeply. So the, so the River Jordan. Ooh. <laughs> comes to mind and sort of crossing the River Jordan uh, and uh, because I also am into genealogy I can trace my roots to the plantation in Virginia where my ancestors yeah. came that has particular meaning so in terms of relating to me you know I'm all about the underdog I'm all about challenges I'm all about being victorious and uh, all those that want to aspire that way we have something to talk about beautiful <laughs> It's another beautiful song, too. And okay, Kev. Yeah, uh, pictures. I, I do think of pictures. Uh, my pictures are up on Instagram at Kevin Doyle Jones. But the th pictures I find myself taking a lot are uh, turbulence on the edge of patterned flow. So there's a little rough water. And then the, what amazes me, and I get real close in the river, and there's a flow that is a consistent, curved, twisted thing, but it is soft and... Uh, the flow is working and breaking yeah. apart, and then on the edge, it's breaking into chaos. So that's the that's Beautiful. the thing that I find really interesting. And those of you who know Kevin personally know, I think you're still doing. You're doing a lot of you walk up the river, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hike up the river, right? So mm -hmm. very intimate relationship to that picture, I suspect. Um, mm -hmm. So I I want to talk to you all about discovery, and I want to talk to you. It, this is my best effort to segue from the prior conversation, which of course I feel hopeless in doing well, but one of the prior conversationalists said, you know, really it's about what can we do. And so in that, in that spirit, each of you has a, has a practice. I want you to very briefly, like in a sentence, describe this is my work, and then describe to me and to all of us, if you can, something you discovered here. Either it could be a gap you discovered or, or a, um, a place where the flow is happening. I'd rather you not sort of go, I saw all these opportunities, but like, mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about it kind of the way I, I tried to tee it up just there. So, um, Esther, are you willing to go first? Mm. Sure. So what is your work? Uh, so my work is integrated capital for soil health and regenerative agriculture. I'll just be simple. Um, and in terms of what I saw here, um, I think that there is a huge excitement going on for what is the potential uh, for change. Because we are in pretty dire times right now, and I don't need to you know, reiterate what those, what those times are like right now, um, but that 
people are focused on solutions. Um, and so we need to create more solutions to address the changes that we need to see in this world. So I'm very excited from, you know, just the energy that I've been getting from mm -hmm. people around looking for solutions and trying to be creative about what those are. Great. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about your work and you think about leaving here, is there a, a, um, is there a gap? Is there something where you're going, but whoa, holy smokes, or say that more strongly. Um, you know, here, here's something I'm really going to have to take care of. Is there something that comes to mind? Yeah, I feel like we really need to find a way to support the individual investor, um, whether it's a high net worth person or whether it's not a high net worth person. We need to find ways to support and activate more individual investors. Um, one of the things that uh, if you look at history, venture capital used to be not an asset class. Before it was an asset class, who was investing in venture capital? It was individual high net worth individuals. Right. So these are the people who are leading the change. Um, and I feel like we do not do enough to support these folks. And so, you know, there's lots of people who have interest and they want change and they have the ability to lead change. And so we need to support these folks um, with mm -hmm. infrastructure mm -hmm. and um, deal flow and assistance. There's a lot of stuff that I think needs to be done there. Taking Esther's lead, who'd like to go next? I'd like to, because deal flow is like, that's the $500 or $5 million or a billion dollar word that, um, that really what got me here and probably on the stage here now is uh, what we're trying to do, what I'm trying to do now with the initiative that you might have heard called SODA here is that we're trying to hit all the friction points that are getting in the way of the deal flow that ultimately is what we'd like to see to jumpstart the SOCAP sector, right? I mean, that's the thing about impact investing. There's, there's no impact unless you get the investments. And one of the things about being at so many SOCAPs is that, um, you know, I think, I think SOCAP does its job. It actually convenes, and if you'd have plotted, a strictly increasing number of the right people in the room, and we all have the right conversations here, but um, synergy is not my favorite word, but I'm coming friendly with anti-synergy when somehow the whole is less than the sum of its parts. Because yeah. the other 362 days of the year, we want to jumpstart it, and we really want to see the deal flow. So um, the deal flow issue that we're trying to hit, the first resistance point we're hitting, we launched here uh, just two days ago, which is called the SODA. It's a data commons. Uh, I'll give a shout out to Audrey Celian, who I'm sitting in for, because she's on a plane back to Switzerland as we speak. But this was her brainchild, and she brought me in as well. She's also a veteran of SOCAP from the initial one coming here. Um, so what we're trying to do is you know, hit those pain points, hit those friction points. Uh, shared data we know is one of them. There's going to be other ones to hit, and we're looking forward to you know, working with uh, SOCAP. And the discovery that I got from here is that um, we're not alone. We weren't the only ones who've been beating our heads against the wall. We've We've, we've tapped into a frustration, people who uh, acknowledge that we could do better, we would like to see more deals, it's, let's say the uh, size of the sector uh, could grow, and that we know that the right people in the room uh, are here now. So even if we don't have um, all the right answers, we're asking the right questions in the right rooms. So, Davida. Yeah, so if I can and follow up. And what's your work? Oh, yeah. So um, I would like to just um, take that thread through a bit. Thank you. If SOCAP is the intersection of money and meeting, they represent the money, and I think I represent the meeting <laughs> portion of, of, of SOCAP, right? And so my work is um, in Detroit, and I'm the co-director of a nonprofit organization called Food Lab Detroit, and we, through food, build community. Right. We are a community of 160 small locally owned food businesses in the city of Detroit. And yes, we provide the technical assistance and the incubation to help them start and sometimes grow and scale their business. But at the end of the day, what we really are are revolutionaries. We are trying to redefine this economy so the economy mm -hmm. in the city of Detroit can be more local, can be more sustainable, and more importantly, can be more delicious. And so, Penelope, I know that you indicated that we were going to move away a little bit from the last discussion, but if I may, take a moment. I feel inside of me, Grace Lee Boggs was brought up in our mm. last conversation, and they talked about, and Grace Lee died yeah. um, on Monday. A hundred years old she was in the city of Detroit, and I would be remiss if I did not bring a word from Grace Lee to the audience today, me mm -hmm. being from Detroit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so Grace Lee said to us in, in Detroit, all of us who studied her, she says, unlike rebellions, which erupt spontaneously and usually last only a few days, revolutions. Revolutions require a patient and proactive process of two-sided transformational struggles. 
going beyond rejection to projection. They bring unto the historical stage human beings who are practicing new, more socially responsible, and loving relationships, not only to one another, but to the earth. And I guess what I'm taking away, Penelope, and to my fellow panelists back to Detroit with me, is that the revolution will be financed. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Bravo. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so. Yeah. That is my takeaway. And, and, and thank you for helping me continue the conversation because I was, I was so hopeful and, and helpless and you just helped such a great deal. Um, Ed, what is your work? Well, uh, my work, as I've mentioned before, is uh, uh, Impact Venture Capital and I hope to help finance that revolution. Oh, right. you know. That's all you need to know. <laughs> So my yes. mom is watching it, it's, so it's, it's on now. record. I, I, I get it. I get it. I Any get particular it. Yeah. Uh, discovery yeah. or gap? You know, one of the things that, you know, I felt here is that uh, it's the, the, the struggle that's going on with all of us here. Mm. And uh, that's what's wonderful about SOCAP. It allows a space for that struggle to happen and um, among folks who you don't have to apologize for it in the mm. process. You yes. don't have to apologize. And so... If I were to talk about a gap, the gap is that, you know, you know we're closing the gap. SOCAP is closing the gap. We've got 2,700 people that have been here today. Next year, 5,000. That mm. gap goes closer. Mm. That, it, that gap is, it becomes smaller. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, what's on your mind? Yeah, you know, I, I, as I sit here, you know, I think about myself as somebody from Mississippi. Uh, we, we're the, as the editor of the Mississippi Business Journal, as Jackson became a black majority city. And, and so I raised the, the question on, on the first day, you know, why is it that we're investing more in Africa than African Americans? And we had a, a session last night, a really passionate, uh, best five minutes is up on Facebook right now, part of Davida's riff and the conversation with Derek. But afterwards, this guy, he's, he works with a design school. And, uh, and I just asked that question, and he was asking it of himself. He, he is a, works with a design firm. He said, you know, we do community-centered, human-centric design. It's really wonderful. We're really active in Uganda, and we're moving to Rwanda. And, and I said, you know, but, but I, I wonder why we aren't doing anything here in Oakland. Mm -hmm. and, and I just came back from Mississippi to where, you know, there was a wedding of some of the folks who were involved in public school, the daughter, and, and, and you know, Mississippi racists are conscious. And I realized that when this fellow said, why is it, he could not see why he wasn't. And so with neighborhood economics, we want to accelerate the flow of capital into marginalized neighborhoods and get folks who are not thinking about those neighborhoods acting in those neighborhoods and helping that guy with asking the question, you know, why are we going to Rwanda and, and not two blocks away to people, you know, with whom we have a, a similar disparity of wealth? And, and he, he, he does not know how to answer that question in himself. It, there's institutional racism that is not personal on the coast, where it's personal and institutional in Mississippi. Yeah. And, and he's just not able to answer that question. But it, uh, the fact that he's asking it is good. Mm -hmm. I want to you know, keep talking to white folks and ask, asking the question, like, well, why not? Who is your neighbor? Why are you acting that way? Right. That's what I want to do. I loved Ed's comment in the earlier panel, too, about, like, if you're inviting people into your house and somehow you feel you have to rearrange your house for the person of color, maybe you ought to check yourself a bit. That really stayed with me. It's kind of the other side of, Kevin, what you're talking about. We have, we have a monitor that tells us off and on whether we have any time left at all or not, but I think we have about two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'd like to invite each of you to do, we can all do the math about how much time each of you has, um, as a farewell to your companions in the audience, uh, either choose a single word or the name of a person who right now inspires you. So it's a single word or the name of someone who right now, right this minute, is an inspiration to you. Single word oh, or an sure. inspiring person. Um, sure, just because I'm a geek, hashtag collaboration. Collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with blindness. The guy I talked to, you know, let's, let's look at our blindness. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say gratitude because I'm grateful that we're having this conversation. Mm. <laughs> I agree. 
Esther. Uh, I'm going to break your rule and do two words. <gasps> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Beautiful portfolio. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. So if I can, Penelope, I guess I'm going to follow um, Esther's lead and go with, with two words, and my two words would be radical love. Radical love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and anybody from the audience, we have 52 seconds left, so <laughs> if you want to shout a word out to us, just get up and shout it. Feel free. Vision! <laughs> what else? Empathy. Say it. Empathy. 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 Yeah. Wonder. Wonder. <laughs> New, New systems. systems, two words. <laughs> Excellent two words, though. Love. Love. Mm -hmm. Solidarity. Solidarity. Revolution. 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 Party? <laughs> Party! <laughs> Party? <laughs> I, I was accused the other night of calling the, the whatever it's called, the dips, dipsy pig, the, you know, the shifty pig, yeah. and I know that that's a party place. Um, <laughs> any last word? Action. Yes. And I'm going to close with one and with which I'm going to ask uh, um, our colleagues to let Kevin and I welcome the rest of our board on stage, if that's okay, Rosalie. And my, the, word, the last word will be thank you. Thank you. <laughs>